Thank you very much. Uh, I was like, would like to start congratulating the, the city of Porto, the Porto University, and the Future Cities uh, project uh, for arranging this event, but also for the collaboration that we have started together thanks to, to this new project. So I would like to take a few minutes here of your time to talk about some of the activities that we have in this uh, area of uh, smart infrastructures and sustainable cities in, uh, in Stockholm. And uh, the starting point from this really comes from sustainability, to, to be a leader in green technology. And the challenge there for many cities around the world is that they are growing, as we heard also about Porto, but I would like to focus on the CO2 footprint that we see. So we would like that to decrease even if we have a growing activity in the city. So one of the largest ongoing projects in Stockholm in this area is the so-called Stockholm Royal Seaport project, where we are turning the harbor of Stockholm into a sustainable city district. This is going on uh, right now, and as you see, if you ever happen to be in Stockholm, this area is pretty close to where I marked the castle where the royal family lives, or maybe you have even been to the Royal Institute of Technology, which is also marked on this. Uh. So it's a harbor close to the downtown, which is now turned over the coming 20 years into a sustainable city district. Very high project goals, ambitious goals are set on this. It should be fossil fuel free by 2030. In developing innovation and new businesses, this is important also for many Swedish companies, and you see some of them listed here. So we put together a number of research projects, which is not only of developing new technologies, but also in creating innovation and working together with institutes and universities in, in the area. And of course, the business opportunity here comes from that we have a large energy consumption in these type of areas in cities. So, as you might know, energy consumption in buildings is about 40% of the total energy sp spending that we do in, the, in Europe. And out of this, 76% comes from a comfort in the buildings. So this provides now many opportunities, and particularly if we are in the area of the Future Cities project, namely because information and communication technology has been listed as one of the main enablers for making these uh, buildings more sustainable. And there have been different estimates on this, but they are quite substantial. One of them talks about an energy savings up to 15%, just by using and developing further this new technology. I would like to say a few things about how we go about this. First of all, we have to realize that achieving energy efficiency means a few different things here. One is, of course, over the time of the day, making everything using less energy. But there is also, when it comes to, to this, other more complex things, but which is enabled by the information and communication technology. One is load shifting. There are things that use energy here which can use it at other time of the day than we maybe would do today. Another thing is peak shaving. What is very costly is this time of the day when we are using most of the energy, and we would like to find these moments and, and just uh, target them in specifically. And what do we mean by targeting them? We mean by developing a number of different technologies to, to make the buildings more energy efficient. And that could have to do with more local renewable energy, having smarter appliances, or optimizing the building climate as, as we have today. And I will focus just a little, little bit on some of the development that we have been, been doing on this. So thanks to being in a, in a, at a university in downtown Stockholm, we have there a, a building automation system, of course. So across the campus, just like in this building here, we are regulating the climate. And there is a system which is existing in there. So when we started to target this, before we would we'll be able to implement that in the Royal Seaport, we have to also be able to demonstrate it in, uh, in the environment where we are. So let's look into 
closer to the building I'm sitting in and some part of, this, uh, of that building. The conference hall, as you see there, actually the Professor Barros gave a talk just a couple of months ago when he visited us. So let's look into a lab here. What is the problem that we have when we would like to optimize the building climate? It's a, a very simple type of control problem because it just has to do with that we would like to minimize the energy that we are using, but in parallel with that, we need to keep the indoor temperature and the air quality in some comfort range. So that is a problem that we are solving. That is a problem we have tried to solve for hundreds of years, right? And that we are solving in this room right now. So what is now the new with having the, the new IT technology? That is that we can do much more sensing and better sensing by providing an infrastructure here that is supporting us to solving this problem better. More wireless temperature CO2 sensors. We can count people. We have weather station. We have information on the web about, for instance, that this, this event is going to happen and we can use that. So these are, are things now that are getting integrated into this system and it is able to help us to, to do things better. Let me come back to the Royal Seaport. So what you see here is just one piece of, um, of solution that is already in place there. So up to the left there you see one of the apartments and we developed there a smart gateway. A smart gateway which enables the system or the, the people who live in this apartment to both be more uh, price friendly if you want as well as greener. So what you see in the plot here in the middle, you see the, the blue line there, the blue curve is the price of energy. In, in Stockholm today or in Sweden, we have this variable pricing, but you also see the green line, and that is now the CO2 intensity of the energy that you're using, of the electricity at the, at the moment. And as you see here, we have the opportunity then to, to let people or let the systems do a trade-off there. So before I conclude my, my presentation here, let me just talk about one other issues which has more to do with uh, transportation. In many big cities, goods delivery, goods transportation is an issue because we have limited infrastructure, limited road network. When we are putting together this smart infrastructure, we enable now to improve goods delivery. And as part of the smart infrastructure here is, for instance, a system we have to, to measure the, the traffic congestion in the city. We work then with doing collaborative road transportation to provide systems where actually the, the companies that are doing delivery are actually able to optimize together with the city, with the city council who are very interested in improving or reducing the congestion in the city, moments during the day when it's most efficient to do these things. So we are creating a city which is now trying to more efficiently using the road network based on various types of real-time traffic data. This also creates very interesting opportunities for innovation here by creating new price models and new models for, for how to integrate the vehicles in this, in this system. So let's just summarize a few of the points that I tried to make here. Number one is that since buildings and transportation are large energy consumers, they also provide fantastic business opportunity and opportunities for innovation. And in areas of sensing, communication, control, and cloud, we have a lot of new opportunity to actually solve these fundamental problems for the societies by, by doing this. I also would like to raise that there is an opportunity also to have a shift in mindset for instance, when we just look at the building as, a, as an energy consumer, that's one thing. But we can also, today, when we have a more integrated use of energy, also look at it as a dynamic storage. We can use it to store energy, for instance, due to that the inertia that we have in here, the temperature that you have in this room is energy, right? And that can be later on used somewhere else in the city. And these type of solutions are popping up now. The third thing, which I think also very relevant for for this uh, Future Cities project is a combination about strong fundamental research with industry collaborations. So we have been thankful in, in Stockholm to our supporters who have, have also provided us with support for, for recruiting international 
fundamental research that we then can take on and build this type of consortium together with the industry and institute. So with that, thank you very much for your attention.